What's the laziest thing you've ever done? Changed my Netflix account to allow instant viewing so I could watch a movie I already owned on DVD without getting up from the couch. I actually do this a lot. I convince myself it's because Netflix is HD streaming and my DVDs aren't in HD, but I know deep in my heart it's because the entire act of DVD retrieval is a pain. And I recently got Apple TV, so in addition to my Blu-ray player, I now have two devices that stream Netflix to the same TV. I just use whichever remote is closer to me. Not me, but my cat will sometimes walk over to the food bowl, flop over onto his side and use his paw to scoop food into his face. I'm glad you clarified it wasn't you. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't known it was the cat. The convenience store near my house shut down and moved directly across the road. I decided to give up my lifelong addiction and quit smoking because I hate crossing roads. I'm at 11 months now, so it turned out to be a good thing. I should mention the reason I hate crossing roads. The whole thing is the epitome of a first world problem. So you want to cross a road. You go up to the pedestrian crossing and press the button. Then you just stand there. As you stand there, you are of two minds. The first is that you could look for a gap in the cars and run across or wait like a good citizen for the green walking man and then cross. The cars then attain a chaotic duality. Some of them will have a consistent speed and some of them will be traveling at the speed which makes you think, well, he's pretty slow, but you hesitate for a split second within which it has covered enough distance to make you stop. That moment has cost you a gap in which you could cross. All right, next gap. But by that time, you're wondering whether enough time has passed for the red traffic lights to come on. Which means that if I do run across and the traffic lights turn red after that, they will have stopped for no reason. The pedestrian crossing button cannot be cancelled, so now I am obligated to wait. At last, the green walking man appears and I may cross. But there are cars on either side of me, and they are all probably looking at me as I cross. My face gets hot. I get flustered and I feel guilt and shame. The busier the road, the more intense the feeling. Also, the less busy the road, the more intense the feeling because in either case, I've made these people who were probably cruising along happily towards their destination. But along comes this pedestrian who wants to cross the road, interrupting the entire flow and rhythm that they've spent time achieving. Which is why I'm sure they're looking at me as I cross, their eyes shooting daggers and murder. Not only do I get flustered, I feel like I am not walking fast enough for their approval and I often stumble because my brain has not communicated the urgency of crossing fast enough to my feet and there is a dexterity mismatch. At last I reach the other side of the road. Now I am conscious of myself. I could walk towards the convenience store, but they might judge me for it. He stopped me so he could go to a convenience store, probably to buy cigarettes. He looks the type. So I am tempted to wait for the traffic lights to turn green so that they can go away. But that involves lingering, which is probably worse. They'll think that I crossed the road for no reason at all. But there are a few seconds where I do linger. Because in those few seconds, I think it's a good idea. But after those few seconds, I have realized how silly it is. And once again, my brain and feet fail to communicate and I stumble again. At last, I get to the convenience store. It's no safe haven either. Did the convenience store owner see what I did? Can he read minds? Does he know what just happened? I buy my cigarettes. And that's where you would think the old deal has come to an end. But no, you are sadly mistaken. As I exit the convenience store, I realize that now I have to repeat all of those steps as I go back exactly the way I came. I threw my remote at a lamp to shatter the bulb so that I didn't have to get up before bed to shut it off. You should invest in clap-on lights. Bought a new package of underwear so I could postpone having to do laundry for another five days. My wife was disgusted one day when she found out I had worn the same pair of underwear for three days. I told her I could wear the same pair for a month if I wanted to. The look of disgust on her face at that statement was all the incentive I needed to take on the challenge. I went an entire month wearing only one pair of underwear. She was not impressed. In my first year of uni, I found a walking stick and kept it in my room. It was the perfect length so that from my bed, I could use it to poke my TV to turn it on, to flick the light switch on and off, 
to turn on the heating and to open the window. I felt rather lazy sitting there jabbing at things with a walking stick because I couldn't be arrested to move from my bed. Less people think I robbed it from someone who actually needed it to walk with. The only reason it was in our flat to start with was because my flatmate's boyfriend left it. The flatmate's brother had robbed a load of coke from a flatmate's boyfriend, we used to call him Steptoe, and fled up north to hide in our flat. Flatmate told Steptoe where he was, so Steptoe came up from London with the walking stick, intending to use it to batter his girlfriend's brother. Unfortunately, by the time he arrived, the coke had been sold and the cash spent on crack and a prostitute, and he'd hopped on a ferry to Belfast. Steptoe moped back to London after squatting in our flat for a few days, much to my displeasure, and forgot his stick. So yeah, that was a bit of a long way of saying the stick's previous owner hadn't been using it to walk with. It's not like I mugged a granny for it. I put my clothes in the laundry basket, even if they're clean, because I don't want to hang them back up. Why don't you just throw them on your bed and sleep on them for a week, like a normal person? I can't be bothered to fix my car window, so it only goes up halfway. People ask what I do when it snows or rains, I say, I get wet. In college, I lived at my grandparents' house. My grandmother would always wake me up so I wasn't late for my first class. Thanks, Graham. I'd get up begrudgingly and drive toward campus. I go to my friend's apartment next to campus. He's in the same class. Sometimes we would walk to class together, except most days I would bid him farewell as I lie in his bed as he went to class and get another couple hours of precious sleep. Meanwhile, my friend would announce to the class that I was still sleeping in his bed. Note, my bed is right next to my window. I couldn't be bothered to sit up and look outside my curtains, so I looked up the local forecast on my laptop. In college, my roommates and I were in our respective beds and wanted to watch TV, but the remote was on my desk, which neither of us could reach. However, I was able to reach the phone. I called my friend who lived beneath us and told her she needed to come upstairs ASAP as if there was some sort of emergency. When she opened the door, I politely asked her to hand me the remote. When she opened the door, I politely asked her to hand me the remote. I think if I were in her situation, I'd grab the remote and walk out with it, then hide it somewhere with an elaborate set of clues leading to it. And make you decide whether you want to expend the effort to find it or the effort of changing stuff on the TV without it. I set up the fingerprint scanner on my work computer so I don't have to put my breakfast sandwich down to log in. A buddy of mine has a fingerprint scanner that only works for his big toe. He never wears shoes or socks at his computer, so he just does that. Pretty genius, if you ask me. I set up surveillance cameras around my cube so I don't have to turn around when people are talking to me. The power went out, so instead of setting the time on my alarm clock, I stayed up until midnight and plugged it in. But how did you know it was midnight? Sometimes I use mustard in my sandwiches, even though I'd rather use mayonnaise. Why? Well, the mustard is in a squeezy bottle, but the mayonnaise is in a jar, and I don't want a dirty a knife. You know they sell mayo in squeeze bottles now. Pissed in a bottle so I didn't have to walk to the bathroom. I had a friend in college who was too lazy to walk down the hallway to the bathroom, so he just started peeing in Mountain Dew bottles. But his laziness didn't stop there. He never wanted to take out the trash, so he would just collect the Mountain Dew bottles above his fridge until maximum capacity was reached. Then the brilliant idea hit him. He can store more piss in a lager container. And that's when he started peeing in milk jugs. He eventually cleaned it up when he hired a girl he liked to come over to clean his room. He didn't want her to see his piss bottles, so he pre-cleaned by tossing them all in the dumpster out front. All 15 bottles and a few gallon of milk jugs. I honestly thought this story was going to end up with someone drinking from one of those bottles. I hate ordering food on the phone, so if a place doesn't have online ordering, I won't order from them. That sounds more like social anxiety than laziness. Couldn't be bothered to install a game I had bought on Steam, so I played Solitaire. Broke up with her over text. Her reply? Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing and was about to text you about it. You are perfect for each other. One day, you'll both realize it. 
but neither of you will get around to calling the other. I got sick of having to get up and walk to the other side of the room to turn off the light when I was done reading at night. So I spent two hours rigging a device where I could pull a string from my bed and have it turn off. I was proud of it until my cousin remarked that I had spent more time rigging the device than I would ever have spent getting up and turning off the light. Necessity is the mother of invention. Friend and I were walking back from Wendy's. He would take sips of Sprite and then just spit it out. When questioned, he said, I'm too lazy to swallow. I'm so ashamed for saying this, but the door has been opened and I'm walking through. That's what she said. Leaves with head down. When in bed, I'll use my older laptop, which is next to the bed, to remote desktop my superior laptop, which is on my desk. Why? So I don't have to move to change the music. Yesterday, I set up my Android to be able to remote my laptop just so I would never have to extend my arm again to pause or control the volume, etc. Your laziness seems reasonable. I put an essay project for a college class off to the last minute. When I realized I had to compose 10 pages over a weekend, I decided I'd rather just not go to that class anymore. 10 pages over an entire weekend? Just realizing that at 9 p.m. the night before the paper's due for a class that starts at 9 a.m. and then get back to me. Two days is usually more than enough time to pull off an A assignment. Just enough time to get to the library to do research, put your thoughts down on paper, and then proofread or make changes to polish it up. One of my family's cats likes to go inside and outside pretty much all the time. I rigged up a door closer using a remote controlled car and trained my cat to open the door by himself. Now I don't have to leave the couch if he wants in or out. Now that I think about it, it seems like a lot of work, but the energy saved by not having to constantly get up, open and close the door and walk back has paid off. This isn't me, but a friend told me this. He leaves his door unlocked when he orders food for delivery. When the delivery guy rings the doorbell, he yells for them just to come in. And when they enter the apartment, he yells from his bed, I'm in the bedroom, you can just bring it here. He has them bring the food into his room, leave it on the bed, and he pays them from his bed. That's not just lazy, it's creepy. If I was delivering something and a dude was screaming for me to enter his bedroom, I'd drop it and run. Pizza delivery guy here. I would only do this if it was a female voice.